All right, so in this video, we're going to uh, apply what we've uh, covered in moments of variance, but this time we're gonna apply it in Python and with, uh, with a, an actual two asset portfolio. So we're going to have uh, two assets. We're gonna have a stock, we're gonna have Walmart stock. So we'll have uh, returns of Walmart. And we're going to have returns of, uh, let's do uh, IBM. So we're gonna have two companies. We're going to, uh, and we're, let's do uh, equally weighted. So if it's equally weighted, that means the weight of uh, Walmart will be uh, 0.5 because we're gonna have two, two stocks. That means the weight of IBM is also going to be 0.5. So now when we're, uh, so I mean for our uh, portfolio would be weight one of, uh, of return one, which in this case would be Walmart stock, return of Walmart stock plus 0.5, uh, the weight of IBM, multiplied by the return of IBM. <clears throat> so our expected value of this portfolio, the expected value of our portfolio is going to be 0.5 of our uh, average Walmart return. So our average portfolio return is gonna be 0.5 times our average uh, Walmart return, plus 0.5 of our average return on IBM. Then for our variance, remember from uh, the previous video, our variance of our portfolio is going to be um, equal to uh, weight one uh, squared. In this case, that would be, uh, uh, I think, 0.25 multiplied by the variance of Walmart plus uh, weight two squared, so another 0.25 multiplied by the variance of our IBM returns, plus, because they are gonna be correlated, two times, um, two times weight one times weight two times the covariance between um, our Walmart and IBM. And then our standard deviation, so remember, this would be our uh, this would be our portfolio uh, expected uh, expected portfolio return. This would be our variance of our portfolio, and our standard deviation standard deviation would be the square root of our portfolio variance. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to our uh, go to our Python our Jupyter notebook file. <clears throat> So now for our, uh, for our Jupyter Notebook, I imported NumPy, Pandas, the data reader, because we're gonna use Quandle. I imported date time, uh, set the style to a dark grid after I imported Matplotlib, Pyplot, Seaborn, uh, our tickers, Walmart and IBM. We're going to, uh, first we have to get the stock prices. So I'm gonna say stock prices. Uh, we're gonna initialize a blank data frame. So we're going to do a pd.dataframe. <clears throat> So stock price is equal to this. We're going to say for T in tickers because we want it to be general. So the code we write for this is going to be for two stocks, but the same code if we increase the tickers, it could be for 50 stocks. So um, let's do uh, stock prices. We're going to create a new column of T. Let's say WB for our Pandas data reader. Uh, data reader. Our name is going to be a ticker. Data source is going to be Quandle. Our start, our start is going to be equal to our start date. So we're going, we're going to uh, get stock prices of Walmart and IBM from January 1st, 2010 to December 31st, 2015. So our end is going to be equal to uh, end date. And we have to uh, give it our, our access key. Our access key, you're gonna to have to go onto the Quandle website and get your API key, but that's gonna be whatever you got. And whenever we do this, we just want the adjusted close. We don't want uh, anything else. <clears throat> and remember uh, from previously, whenever you get this data from Quandle or Stuk, whatever data source you get, whenever you, uh, the index is gonna be sorted from latest date to earliest date. We want earliest date to latest date so we can get returns. So you want to make sure the uh, index is assorted in ascending order. 
So sending equal true, we want it to be in place. So when place equal true, we'll run it. This works. <clears throat> All right, and to make sure it worked, so you get the first, uh, first two rows. So we have our date. Uh, it starts January 4th, 2010. So that would be the um, uh, beginning of the week, non-holiday beginning of the week. <clears throat> then, uh, so now let's do returns. Let's do a log return. So let's do a stock returns. And you do the, a log return two different ways. You could do uh, numpy.log, stock price minus numpy.log, stock price shift one. So it's gonna be the difference between the logs. Or we could just do uh, the natural log of stock prices percent change plus one. They'll, uh, they'll give you the exact same value. It doesn't matter which one you do. <clears throat> so to, uh, to make sure it, uh, or to see what it looks like, let's plot cumulative log returns. So cumulative log returns is going to be um, e to the power of stock returns dot cumulative sum. And we'll plot it. <clears throat> So you can see it, um, they go up, they go down a little bit, but this is uh, cumulative, uh, cumulative uh, return. So if you invested $1 back in 2010, you would have about $1.20 in both of these stocks. The peak was about $1.80 for Walmart. It looks like the peak was back in 2013 for IBM. Um, then uh, let's also look at, uh, let's also, look at the uh, covariate or let's look at the correlation matrix so let's do um let's do stock returns dot uh correlation this is gonna be the correlation matrix so the correlation between walmart and ibm is about uh 34 percent 33 percent we can also do uh, dot describe so stock returns dot describe and this would give us our mean standard deviation and the quartiles <clears throat> but remember for uh to calculate the um to calculate our portfolio variance we don't want the correlation we want the uh we want the covariance let's do stock returns dot cov for covariance to give us covariance matrix so along the uh, diagonal we have the variance uh to sort of prove that let's do a uh, stock returns so got walmart Let's do uh, variance, and um, let's round it to. Uh, looks like it's rounded to five decimal places. So we'll do this, round it to five decimal places. And we get the uh, the same value if we do it with IBM. This is going to give us uh, this value right here. So if we do it with IBM, we get the. Uh, looks like it goes out to six decimal places, but it'll be the same exact number. So along that diagonal, just like on the co correlation matrix, the diagonal is the correlation between Walmart and Walmart, it should be one. On the covariance matrix, the covariance between Walmart and Walmart would be the variance of Walmart. And you see that in the formula that we did, uh, that we did before, you should, uh, should be able to prove that yourself. So now if we wanna do an equally weighted portfolio, let's do uh, weights and uh, let's create a matrix of ones. And, uh, there's some uh, some more notes on this on eCampus if you go to the uh, PDF file, but let's do uh, the length of tickers and create a matrix of ones. And uh, let's look at it. So now we have two ones, but we wanna make it general. We want a, a, a general formula that if we changed it to uh, from, from say two stocks to 20, we wanna just be able to run the same code. So let's, uh, let's try, to, try to make this as general as we can. Uh, another thing in Python, is we can do uh, we can uh, do the uh, backslash equals, which is going to uh, divide everything by the uh, sum. If we do it like this, so weights uh, backslash equal weights dot sum is going to divide each element in the array um, uh, by the uh, the element that we're we're dividing it by. So this is going to be sum. So now it's going to uh, sum the the array up. So one plus one is two, so it's gonna be one divided by two, uh, and the second element will be one divided by two. So now it's gonna have 2.5. So now we have our weights for an equally weighted portfolio. So now for our portfolio return, 
for our daily mean portfolio return. There's two ways to do it. Uh, you have what's uh, in Excel, you have a sum product. In Python and NumPy, you have something similar. It's called dot, it's the dot product. So if you have two arrays and you do a dot product of two arrays, in this case, weights, and let's do a uh, stock returns dot mean. This is going to give us portfolio return. <clears throat> and uh, to show that, I'll do it again in a loop. Let's say for I in uh, range length of tickers, we will, uh, let's create some, initialize a sum, sum initialize at zero. You should remember this back at the beginning of class when we did our loops and created the different sums and counts. Um, so let's do uh, S is going to be plus equal to, uh, let's do our weights, get our ith element in the weight multiplied by the um, ith element in our stock returns. Oh, we get an error because of uh, those two values there. So now if we look at S, no, that's not good. Um, what's going on here? So let's do a stock returns dot mean. Let's do I location. There we go. Because it's a panda series, that's why we can't just do what we did before. So now if we look at S. Now, if we look at S, it is exactly the same. So for here, we did a, uh, what's the equivalent to a sum product in Excel. We multiply weight one times the uh, mean return one and added weight two times the mean return of, of, of uh, return two. Here, we're doing it with a loop. Um, the reason why it didn't work before is I forgot the mean and it's a panda series. So you have to do index location whenever you want to use I. You can't forget that. Um, but in order to keep it general, and uh, the more efficient ways to use uh, NumPy, uh, NumPy's dot product. Uh, this uses matrix operations. So that use the, the math behind the matrices is beyond the scope of this class. But whenever you deal with a larger portfolio, uh, using a loop versus a dot, for, uh, especially for, uh, for the average return, it's, uh, it's not going to be that, that um, big of a deal for a small portfolio. But say you have a portfolio of 500 assets, it could be the difference with milliseconds and minutes. Um, for one loop, it wouldn't be too bad. But for variance, when you have to deal with two loops, it gets a little bit more, uh, more cumbersome. So ideally, you want to use a dot product whenever you can over a, over a loop. So now let's do, uh, let's do the portfolio variance. <clears throat> uh, for this, uh, back in the slides, we would have, uh, we go over the math a little bit more detail. Um, so I'll leave that there. But the, uh, the best way, the most efficient way to do this, the formula for, a, um, for the portfolio variance would be weights transpose times the covariance matrix times weight. So there's, uh, there's two ways to do this. Um, you could do a loop and iterate through the uh, covariance matrix, or you could, you could do the matrix operations. I'm gonna kind of just brush over that and we're just gonna jump straight to the dot product just so it's a little bit, um, save some time. And this is the, uh, the preferred method. Um, so we do a stock return, stock returns dot covariance matrix, uh, weights, I'll close that. And this is gonna give us our, um, our portfolio variance. <clears throat> our daily portfolio variance. So now I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to do it again. This time I'll, I'll just uh, break it up. Um, so it's, let's do uh, weights times, uh, let's do a sum. So we're going to start at zero. Let's say for I in range length uh, tickers. <clears throat> let's say for J range length tickers. We want to iterate through the uh, the matrix. As remember, 
uh, whenever we do the uh, start returns dot covariance matrix, we get the variance. We have one of those. So one, one, we're good there. We get uh, this, uh, one, two, this would be the covariance. We're going to do this twice. And we're only going to get one variance. So we can, we can do it like this. So let's, uh, let's do uh, weights. Um, I, or I'm sorry. Yeah. I times weights J times the uh, stock returns dot covariance matrix. Let's do the, uh, the values um, to show you what the values is going to look like. The stock returns dot covariance matrix. This is a NumPy, or I'm sorry, this is a pandas a data frame. If we do dot values, now it's just a, a NumPy array. And then we can get the ith. Uh, column and the jf, uh, I'm sorry, the ith row and the jf column. We'll run that. Uh, weights is not defined. Uh, it looks like I spelled it wrong here. So I'll run this now. Now we get s. It should be exactly the same. So it is, uh, it is exactly the same as the one before. So now, now we've calculated our um, portfolio portfolio uh, variance, daily variance, and our portfolio daily return. <clears throat> so this is, um, again, though, dot product is the faster way. If you ran this again, but with, uh, say, 500 assets, using the loops, it could, take, um, it could take several minutes, possibly five to 10 minutes. If you do it with the dot product with 500 assets, it should take uh, still less than a couple seconds. So the dot product is the faster way. It's the, it's the more efficient way. So now let's... Um, Let's clean up a little bit. Let's say port var. Let's say uh, port standard deviation is going to be equal to port var as square root, so to the power of one half. Let's say here we have a port um, return, which is going to be equal to that. <clears throat> and we'll uh, look at it all. Um, port return. Let's just uh, print it. Let's print our uh, port return uh, rounded to uh, four decimal places. And let's uh, print our uh, port variance round to four decimal places. And let's print our uh, portfolio daily standard deviation round to four decimal places. So we'll run all this. And this is the exact same if. Uh, and our, our formulas will work even if it's a, a larger a larger portfolio. So this was a two asset portfolio. Let's add uh, two more. Let's add um, let's add AT and T and let's add Ford just because we'll run it all again. Just uh, just to show you that the formulas will still work. And we get a little bit more detail on the PDF, but again, this doesn't really um, uh, matter too much later on in the class. It's just something I wanted to make sure we talked about. Uh, since we talked about it in the uh, on the whiteboard, uh, this is how you would do it in Python. You can take this further and use it for uh, actually apply mean variance optimization. Um, you can get the sharp ratios and you can get a little bit more advanced. I can post uh, the the uh, notebook files on that too on eCampus in case any of you wanted to uh, to run through that and try to apply it to a larger portfolio. Uh, but anyways, this was uh, this ends. 4.2 moments. So in the next video, we'll start 4.3, which gets a little bit more detailed range of variables and distributions.